once that finishes up, um, congratulations. Uh, things are pretty easy from here. Not that they're easy to prog, but once you get it down, once you learn it, um, it's far less difficult than the stuff you've done at the end of the day. And <laughs> uh, I goofed here, but thanks to my job, it's got a safety crutch. Um, how this works, if I can back it up, is you're going to have uh, Alexander the Creator, Brew Justice, and CC Spawn. Nothing is targetable, so all you need to do is focus on mechanics here. Um, and you're going to have DPS uh, south and east, and tanks and healers north and west. Uh, so if I can pull up a diagram to show you exactly what that means. Okay, so we have two people getting um, a tether, blue tether. That means uh, long range. These two, if they're not far enough apart from each other, uh, they will die. You have two people with aggravated assault, it's called. That's a little lightning symbol. If they are not stacked uh, together, they will die. Um, we have two people with a Christmas tether, as we call it. And if they are not close enough to each other, they will die. And there are two people with no debuff. Uh, it doesn't matter where they stand, except for the fact that Cruise Chaser has Conal AoEs that need, need to be baited. Um, Cruise Chaser will target the three closest players for a Conal AoE. Brew Justice will target the two closest players for uh, a Flamethrower AoE. The only variation here is you could, one, you can get any of these debuffs, and two, Brute Justice and Cruise Chaser might be swapped. So, um, DPS is always east, but if you'll notice here, um, it's drawn a little bit closer to Cruise Chaser um, than the tank healer and this group is from Brute Justice. So the blue tether next to Brute Justice always goes to the edge of the arena, and then the uh, blue tether uh, closer to CC um, always goes to not quite the edge of the arena. <laughs> My video will help with this because I accidentally went to the place you're supposed to go. Um, so you would typically go to this little golden arc here if you're the blue tether. So um, our machinist here will go to this uh, golden arc here uh, and not towards the edge of the arena because they have to bait one of the cruise chaser conal AOEs. If they go to the edge of the arena, and Cruise Chaser will target those uh, on Brute Justice that were baiting the Flamethrowers. And if they bait the Flamethrower and the Conal AoE, they're gonna kill that whole side of the raid. So you want to be close enough to the Cruise Chaser to bait it, uh, but not so close that you are not far enough from the for the Blue Tether to trigger. Um, so what that means, Blue Tether, you are going to be max distance if you're on Brute Justice side, and uh, close a little bit closer on this Golden Arc if you're on Cruise Chaser side. I realize as the aggravated assault player, um, DPS is typically east, but the only case you're west um, is if BJ uh, is on the west side. So if you're aggravated assault, uh, the, the thunder debuff, you need to be on the side with brute justice on it. Um, I realize this here, big teleport over to my team, and it'll time stop and it'll resolve all the mechanics. So aggravated assaults resolve, um, the flamethrowers come out. And uh, Alexander Prime spawns. This is a pot window. Uh, he's up for like exactly 30 seconds. So uh, typically players will pot before the temporal stasis where we're frozen in time because your buffs are frozen during that time too. Chastening Heat is a tank mechanic. And you're free, you're free to just, you know, burn everything you got here. Because uh, there's going to be another section of downtime here. As a black mage, I get like a full nice fire phase in here uh, before he transitions. And this is Inception Formation. We're going to have four players get orb tethers. And four players not get orb tethers. Alex is going to spawn somewhere in the arena. I believe it's north or south. It could be either one. And we have, uh, so the orb players will have an orb chase them around the arena until it touches them and it, 
and explodes. Uh, and they're tethered to the players. The tethers are not passable. Um, the goal is to explode them on these red dots here. Um, so if the orbs are coming from this side of the arena, we want to explode them on the opposite side. So um, our tank here, for example, um, has an orb coming from the west side of the arena. They're going to explode them on these red dots while we explode them on the other side. Um, that's shown right here. So our tanks would be exploding them here because they got the tethers from the left, the green orbs on the left side. And we got ours from the right side, so we're going to explode them here. It doesn't matter which one you pick. You have a lot of time to move between them. Um, but you're typically going to be coming from this side, um, coming from north, coming down. So just whoever is the first to get um, to, to this red marker, just run along down and get to the further one. So it doesn't matter uh, the two orbs coming from the right side. It doesn't matter who pops it on which red orb uh, or red circle over here. And just pick one and stick with it and have the other person move to the other one. Once the orb explodes, you're going to group up back on Alex. Um, so we'll just show the green orb responsibility right here for now, and then we'll talk about the what the pink players are doing. All right, so I have an orb. I'm going to come over here. Um, all right, so Alex spawns. I realize I have an orb. I'm gonna come up here to the C marker and just chill here for a moment. Um, if you don't have a C marker here, it's totally fine. Um, just don't, whatever you do, don't move all the way in front of Alex. Cause we're gonna use this area right here to be able to wrap around these orbs. If you bait them straight north, we need to start wrapping around the orbs in a little bit of a weird way. So we bait them a little bit towards the middle of the arena and then um, that way it's easier, easy for us to like run around these orbs to our red uh, markers. Um, but I'll come over here. I like to come to the far one um, and I'll show you why in a second. So if the orbs, we have the orbs blow up on each other or on ourselves, if they touch each other, I believe, if the explosions touch each other, I believe it's a wipe, uh, I can't remember, but just make sure you're standing right on that red circle um, and it's gonna give you a heavy debuff. Um, you can sprint through here if you want. Um, uh, not really necessary, but uh, the reason I take the far one is because I can just ethereal manipulation to my team. Um, and if uh, the reason we're grouping up north is because proximity damage is going to come out from the south. So the closer I was south, the more damage I would take. Uh, we had one player die here not the end of the world um it's a little dicey you need to get them up quickly though but what's happening here is we all move towards brute justice um after that we group north for the aoe damage as soon as the aoe damage went out um in fact as soon as i move up as soon as i come to the group here i'm looking in the corner of my eye i see cruise chaser over here when i see cruise chaser over there uh, i know i'm not supposed to run that way we need to bait flamethrowers from brute justice that's the next mechanic um, the tank is already over here, you'll see, because he can handle that proximity damage. He's a fucking badass. So he can handle that proximity damage. He's going to take um, the first um, flamethrower. He's popping mitigations for this because, uh, you know, he was taking that proximity damage. You'll notice he has Rampart up. Um, he's... And then Din's taking the next one. Remember, healers have all the time to heal. There's no damage to be done in this phase. And granted, there's a good amount of healing that needs to go out, but... Uh, if the tank needs to, you know, take some damage to get in position, it, it definitely helps. But they need, uh, one tank needs to be there pretty quickly. The second tank can kind of take their time, but they do need to get there pretty quickly. Uh, they do like to pop sprint sometimes, especially when they're progging, uh, to make sure they get the baits off in time. But basically, one tank uh, takes the first bait headed south. Uh, the other one takes the second bait headed straight through the arena. And the rest of the team uh, baits it as a group all together um, in the northern half of the arena. Um, and then we have here uh, is the time to check debuffs. Uh, I have a shared sentence debuff, as you see, I just got here. This means that I need to stack with two other players or I die. Um, two players also got the uh, aggravated assault again. This is the lightning debuff. They need to stack together or they die. As a theme of this fight, shared sentence does not stack with aggravated assaults. So they need groups to work together 
um, but if they stack together, they would just all die. Uh, in addition to that, we have a far tether again, this blue tether debuff. The way this works, um, if you do this mechanic right, uh, the heart will dash off in a direction of where Alexander is located. That is going to determine where you can stand, where the safe spots are to survive the following mechanic. We have the players that have the aggravated assaults and any remaining no debuff healers uh, or DPS go to the right of where the heart dashes off to. And uh, the tanks and the shared sentence player go to the left of where the heart dashed off to. Uh, also important is whichever DPS gets the long tether, they will be baiting a conal cleave from Cruise Chaser shortly thereafter. And I'll show you that here in a second. Heart is going to, this heart takes no damage. It takes zero damage. You can't even DPS, you know, pad uh, for your parse. There's no reason to damage it. The only reason you have to hit it is if you want to proc something or some, you know, whatever, or build gauge, stuff like that. Um, so as Black Mage, I don't have any of that, so I don't even bother hitting it. Heart dashes off this way. We know Alexander is over here. So we have, uh, I'm the shared sentence player. I'm going to the left of that with the tanks. So I should have the tanks join me over here. Tanks join me over here. They dashed over to the right. They only have four players up, so they'll need some extra mitigation, but um, here we go. Um, we have the far tether over there. We do have a player dead here, so this is why we ended up wiping, but uh, this is a good time to go back and show you the puddle perspective where you drop the puddles by the cat, um, and we can see that all the way through on a clean run too. All right, if I can take you through what the caster does, DPS does, actually anyone does in this phase, inception formation for the puddle mechanic, if you don't get a tether, you're gonna come over here to the southern side by this cat. Um, and again, the cat, I believe, could be north, um, just wherever the cat is. Um, you want to position yourself uh, between these two um, little stokes or whatever coming out on the arena. And uh, two players will just kind of position themselves eyeballing it behind them, uh, making a nice little square here. Um, so he'll just get to move back a little bit because you don't want these to overlap. And if I could pull up the image again, um, this is what we want it to look like, something like this. The cat's here. You're just positioned around this you know, little red circle here. You don't want them to overlap, but you want them to be as close together as possible without overlapping. And then once these puddles drop, snapshot, it's time for you to move north. Uh, you need to group up because the proximity AOEs are going to pop. Uh, the cat moves through these uh, puddles, and once he touches them, it does that proximity damage. And then I looked for BJCC. I didn't see it on that side, so I know to run over here. The tank's already there to bait. So they bait the first one. The tank's here to bait the second one. Uh, I move forward. You want to move in because he, he's targeting the closest players. You want to move forward to make sure that you bait the, the third one. It doesn't go back towards the, the tanks. Now I'm just jumping around, messing around. I notice I have the thunder debuff. I'm waiting to see where the heart goes, and I'm going to go to its right because I don't have shared sentence. It's very infrequent that you end up going left. You only go there when you have shared sentence. Um, and then the player with the tether... Who is that? That is our ninja. Player with the tether is going to go what we say close D. Uh, he's going to be close on the D side, and the healers are assigned to do the um, the west and the north side, I suppose, of Cruise Chaser to bait the other two Conal AoEs. And the rest of the party's on four, except for a tank that is baiting Brute Justice by standing as far away as possible. Uh, he's going to stand over here. He's going to sprint to get over here, too. Um, so you'll see him, right? He's actually right here. He's going to run through us. He's going on the other side. Um, so everyone else is on four on the far side of this market because we don't want to bait this Cruise Chaser Kono AoE by accident. We have our Ninja over here on close D, very close to bait the Konal. Boom. As soon as the third Konal shoots, 
Uh, brute justice is gonna jump. You see the super jump happening right here. We move in to avoid this um, super jump. It's gonna jump over us. Boom, you see that jump? The tank baited it over in that side, and then Alexander Prime spawns. And that's Inception Formation. Chastening is a tank mechanic again. Big DPS window. You can burn cooldowns here too because there's going to be a wormhole formation coming up next. This is what a lot of people say is the hardest mechanic in the fight. Um, so there's going to be another big wall just like Limit Cut. 